All right, Disappearing of Gensokyo, easy mode, new game, no DLC, run by Capellan, starting three, two, one, go. This is the Disappearing of Gensokyo. It's a fan game based off the Toa Project a series of Japanese bullet hell shooters starring girls in frilly dresses and funny hats. Uh, whereas those are top-down scrolling vertical bullet hell shooters, this is uh, kind of a twin-stick shooter ARPG dealy. Uh, this is a tutorial stage, can't skip it. But it's like most stages in that our goal is to get to the end of the stage. Uh, we can't run straight to the end of the stage though because there are purple barriers like this. Uh, the way to get those to go away is to kill a certain set of enemies. Usually most of the enemies in the room or most of the uh, powerful like mini boss or boss enemies in the room. Uh, so what you're mostly going to see is me running through areas trying to kill things quick. Okay. Uh, the barriers are represented by a particle effect that takes a little while to fade in and fade out, so you'll see things like what you just saw, where it looks like I'm running through a barrier that's there. It's not actually there, just the particle effect hasn't dissipated. Uh, this game has a sprint, which you're going to be seeing a lot of. It has a stamina bar at the bottom of the screen. Uh, coming up on an auto-scroller, so we'll have a little bit of time to talk about more things. Uh, every character in this game... So this has a party... Uh, party system, you can switch between member party members and that changes your primary attack, your secondary attack, and your bomb. Uh, you're only going to be seeing two characters this run. Uh, the first is the character I'm playing here, Tenshi. Her primary is a fire blast, uh, does a bit of damage, pierces enemies. Her secondary is a sword strike, it's not very good, you won't see it. And her bomb, and bombs are powered by green power-ups like I kind of just picked up. Uh, look at the bottom right hand of the corner, bottom right hand corner if you want to see how many I have, is a rock, which, get hype, drops on enemies to stun them and then explodes to do damage. Uh, this game has a health system, uh, a shield bar just like Halo, and when your shield's down, you take you can only take like a few bullets before you die, just like Halo. Uh, I believe it makes the same sound as Halo, but oh hey, here's our first boss. She's also Tenshi, and now she's dead. Uh, so this game, that's kind of going to be the running pattern for mini bosses and bosses that you see in this game. Uh, I'm going to be just bombing the crap out of them. This game has some really nice boss fights and mini boss patterns, but. Unfortunately, you're not going to be seeing those this run. So we just went to the hub world, uh, but instead of doing anything in the hub world, they just hit restart. That's going to do two things. First off, it's going to warp us to the next level, and it's going to give us access... And thanks to the magic long warp, we now have access to Marissa, who we're not supposed to have until uh, stage 5, but really, taking things through magic is what Marissa is all about. Uh, her main ability is a laser, and she has a bomb that just absolutely murders bosses. You'll see an example of that in just a second. Uh, I should have done the bomb thing. Anyway, uh, she also has a speed upgrade that we'll be picking up later, uh, and that makes her really fast, but uh, we'll deal with that when we get to it. Uh, so coming up is our first boss. It is, of course, everyone's favorite fairy, Shirano. Uh, so to kill bosses quick, uh, Marissa's bomb has an a it does AOE damage and you toss out bombs quick, I'll be using a trick which uh, was discovered by Vampire Pineapple, or at least I'll be attempting to use it. I may or may not actually make it work, because uh, I'm bad at video games. Uh, and what that does is uh, lets you avoid the cooldown timer on throwing bombs by mashing sprint to cancel an animation or something. It lets you throw down a lot and you just do a ton of damage because uh, bosses aren't affected by knockback. Uh, Marissa's bomb is actually not that good in most levels because it does knockback and you know there's some obvious lack of synergy between a thing that ca that drops an AoE and something that does knockback, right? Because it knocks enemies out of the AoE. Kind of defeats the point. But uh, bosses aren't affected by knockback. Uh, Mini bosses are, but bosses aren't. So, and they most of them have phases where they'll stand still and throw out a ton of bullets because this is at its core uh, based off the Bullet Hell series. Uh, and so they'll just stand there and take a ton of punishment, and you can kill them. 
kill them quickly and it works great. I uh, use another auto scroller, so I'm just basically focusing on moat. Can't really speed it up until this very end. Uh, I already got bullied, so I'm not getting this as quickly as I should have. Ah, uh, shit. Man, I lost a couple seconds there. Uh, not a huge deal, uh, because I already took this stage about as quickly as I usually do. Yeah, 2 minutes 8. I, I think I saved a second off my PB anyway. Okay, so... Next up is... So, uh, I guess I'll go into a little bit about the story of this game. Uh, so the story is that, uh, all kinds of weird monsters have started attacking my place. Or, have started attacking Tenchi's place, and she wants to talk to series protagonist and shrine maiden Reimu to figure out what the deal is. Problem is that reimu has gone missing, so we have to go, we take it upon ourselves to go find her. Uh, what the story is actually about, anyway, here's an escort. Side note, this is an escort mission. Uh, your escortee uh, basically only cares about your position and not whether there are actually enemies ahead, so the fastest thing to do is just run right through and blow up enemies to keep her safe. Which is what I did. Oh, and a good example of how the difficulty changes things. Uh, on easy mode, those take off half your health bar. On hard or above, they actually straight up kill you. The suicide enemies, I mean. And this area, we're just going to be bomb spamming because the game gives out this game gives out bombs like candy, but this level especially just has a ton of pickups scattered around. So we'll be using and abusing those. Anyway, uh, here's a barrier with a lot of eyes. We can't break it, so we're going to need the help of a magic artifact. Oh, hey, Tenshi. Bye, Tenshi. So this is the Iron Stone, it's gonna break that barrier for us. Unfortunately, the magic of the Iron Stone attracts another wave of enemies who spawn at a fixed rate and uh, at fixed positions. So, again, not much we can do to speed this up, just kill things quick. And here we go. And then we'll use this barrier breaker to break the barrier. Uh, I got distracted by explaining things, but... Uh, so yeah, uh, we get invaded by all kinds of non-canon things like the sin, like the sin sex, which are a dumb two chan meme, uh, and the phantoms like the uh, white ten white haired tenshi you just saw. And the joke, as it were, is that uh, Gensokyo is being invaded by like the fanon interpretations of the characters. And uh, that's a kind of cool meta thing that could only really be done as a fan game for the series. Anyway, uh, here's a boss fight against Suikia. Uh, yep, we're killing her through the same thing, the same way we kill all bosses, bomb spam. Yep, already dead. Not much you can do right now except just wait out the timer. So, uh, thing that I should explain, I guess, uh, to get the speed upgrade that we'll need from Arsa to make parts of the other levels fast, uh, we need to have 800 points items by the 8th stage. You can kinda see them if you look in the bottom right corner quickly. Uh, like, usually it's not too tall of an order to pick up 800 by the 8th stage. Yeah, 403. You can see it very quickly when you look at it in the, uh, if you look at the bottom right corner. But I might have to slow down. Anyway, here's where you're supposed to get Marissa. Hey, Marissa. Uh, this is an auto-scroller escort stage, so like that part from the last stage times 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, our escortee, this fairy maid, always follows the same pattern. Uh, well, almost always, but I'll get to that later, maybe. Uh, and all the enemies who will intercept her spawn in the same places, so... We have some time to fool around, and I'll use it to farm some blue points items. Uh, here's an example of why we're not going to be picking up magic items throughout this run. Uh, because picking up magic items actually requires you to go through, like, these awful optional fights with... Well, they're not awful, but 
They're awful for a speed game. Uh, they're too slow, so we won't do those. And I get back just in time to just save my escortee from a whole bunch of penguins. And yeah, there, there are penguins in the desert. Uh, that text box is going to stay there, don't worry about it. So here's an example of how the characters in this game just aren't balanced at all. If you look in the radar in the top left corner, you'll notice that I just killed all those enemies before they went on, before they got on screen. Uh, that's because Maris's laser has an effective range of very long, uh, and by and it pierces enemies too, so it's very good at crowd control. Like by contrast, uh, Tenshi's uh, fire blast has an effective range of short enough that the Will of the Wisps, which explode when they die, uh, will will deal damage to her. So that's part of why you're going to be seeing a lot of Mara in this run. Uh, I kind of got sloppy there and let one of the suicide guys hit the maid, but again, easy mode, so she has enough health to tank it. Uh, she has to get to the end there. There'll be one penguin that spawns, but it's not a huge deal. Instead, we're just going to wait here. Uh, this barrier will go down when she goes into her spot. And, oh, we're not done yet. Hey, Alice. Okay, that was kind of a mess. Bye, Alice. So the next stage is a fairy hunt. Uh, there are three juiced up fairies that we need to deal with. Uh, and they spawn in fixed locations. So we can just run to where we know they are and kill them. Okay, well actually, you have to kill four. There's that one, that first one. But, you know, it doesn't count. Uh, getting bullied there. Not a huge deal. My shield will start regenerating before then. If you pay attention here, you'll notice that suicide enemies actually do team damage, so they'll hurt their allies. That's kind of funny. Uh, it's not very effective for killing people uh, most of the time, but you do see it a couple of times here, and that's funny. Okay, I'm kind of taking more damage here than I'm comfortable with, but that's not a huge deal. Anyway, there's two down, and notice also that even just basically you outrun all the enemies in the game, including the melee enemies, so yeah, not super threatening. And now we just gotta get to the end of the stage. Uh, I'll just throw a few bombs to clear some of the enemies ahead. Okay, uh, next stage is a human village, uh, same kind of deal, just run to the end. Let's see. Hey, OQ. Bye, OQ. Okay, you gotta break this skull cannon to get to the next area. Drops a barrier that was here that you might have noticed earlier. Uh, so again, the Will of the Wisps, when they explode, they do damage and knockback, so I'll just play a little safe and stand back here. Anyhow, yeah, here are some skull cannons, but if you played Rock, Paper, Scissors, you know Rock beats Skull Cannon. Alice, but if you played Rock, Paper, Scissors, you know Rock beats Alice. Uh, I get some good bombs here. To be on pace, I need to end this level with like 200 points items. Uh, that's not too big of an ask, usually. As long as I have like 100 right here. And so, 
Here we come to another fight area and another auto scroller, and say it with me, the enemies spawn in fixed positions with fixed timings, so I know where everything is going to be, and that makes killing enemies efficient. Uh, it doesn't matter a whole lot because, uh, again, I can't speed up this fight because fixed positions, fixed timings. But it does let me. It does give me an opportunity to farm up some points items. Which I will do, and I will need to do, to be sure that I have the speed upgrade for Marissa. Still, again, on easy, it's it's really hard to die on easy unless you're not paying attention, so... Oh, man. But there was actually a non-zero chance I might have done it right there. Oh, no! Look at all these enemies! What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Oh, no. Hey, here's Kokoro. She's gonna be our next boss. Two minutes, four seconds is an alright time for that stage. So the way bosses work in this game is that they'll throw out a volley of attacks, then they check their health to see if they have enough low enough health to move on to the next phase. Uh, if you knock down the enemy's health too much, uh, you can cause them to skip phases. For example, here we're going to skip a lot of phases. And, in fact, we're skipping the entire fight. I kind of screwed this up, but it's still going to kill her. Yeah, because again, she has this phase where she starts by standing still, uh, and she's affected by knockback, so she just uh, takes all the damage that Marissa throws at her, and dies real quick. Okay, so we're not going to wrong warp here, we're going to instead uh, actually take some time to go through the menus and buy the upgrade. So first things first, and we do have enough money, uh, we have to go to Iku and we have to actually buy Marissa. Again, we've been stealing her through the magic of the wrong warp, and stealing with magic is what Marissa's all about, I think she'd approve. Uh, now we go over to the upgrade station, we buy the speed upgrade, and we confirm it, and now we just wrong warp, and we'll be going on to the next stage. Assuming the wrong warp doesn't betray me. Uh, the next stage is a werewolf hunt. Uh, much like the fairy hunt, they spawn in places, so I just have to run across the map. It's one of the longest stages to complete, both in the speed run and casually, just because it's so dang big. So, here's the speed upgraded Marissa. You can already see she's so fast, we're running past enemies before they spawn. Yeah, sorry if you like Kagero, we're going to be killing her uh, a lot this stage. Uh, well, technically we're killing her phantoms, because again, the plot, but you know, whatever, man. And we're going to be killing her the same way we kill most enemies. We kill most boss enemies with bombs. Getting a little bullied here, but that's what we just killed. And that's two out of three. One more right up here. So, uh, the speed upgrade is really the only upgrade we can uh, afford time-wise to pick up. Uh, all the other upgrades are real expensive, also RIP Frank or Z, uh, are really expensive and like so much that we wouldn't be able to collect enough points items early enough in the run to make further upgrading Mars' speed worth it. Uh, and yeah, again, another slugfest. Positions, fixed timings, can't can't speed this up until I get to the very end. So, but I can efficiently kill a few enemies, and so I will farm up a few bombs. Not that I'll need them all that much. Anyway, 
Okay, so yeah, if you see me going for points items, that's just bad habits and or stunting. Either way, it's not good for a speed game, uh, but I'm bad at video games and I'm never going to get a world record, so I don't really care. It's just me. Anyway, uh, here are all the enemies down. Oh, oh no, actually, I got one more. So, uh, here's Sakia. Uh, pick up the barrier breaker that she had, use it to break the barrier, and get to the end. Hunt up on an invisible wall there. Okay, so the next stage. Uh, the, when you play this stage the first time, you're going to go down the main path, and then you're going to get murdered by a bunch of overpowered enemies. Uh, and you're going to find out what you were really supposed to do was go to the left side of the screen, take a long detour around a chain of islands, and beat it that way. That's real slow. And we have a bomb that can stun enemies. So, uh... We're not gonna bother with those island chains. Perfect. And we're going to run right past all that and, uh... play that, ga play that stage the right way and it takes a few minutes. Play it this way. 17 seconds. So coming up is the uh, one of the most interesting stages to run because here are some fights that you actually save time if you take quick. Oh, and hi Alice. Bye Alice. Scarlet Devil Mansion. Got a lot of fairy maids. Gotta kill all those fairy maids. And I'm doing a bad job at killing the fairy maids. Oh wow, what's that? Okay, that's... That glitch, I'll have to figure that out, because that's speed tech right there. I went so fast, it was crazy. Uh, the rooms in this mansion are actually big enough that enemies won't necessarily see you across the room. So Maris is good here, because you can do damage to them and aggro them on you. Anyway, kill the enemies, gotta kill all the enemies in this hall. So we'll be using bombs, because they're fast. These melee enemies are super dangerous, but they died of bombs, so it's alright. Okay, that should be everyone. Uh... Again, same sort of thing, kill enemies quickly. Uh, there's some movement to care about. This room's full of a lot of objects that block your laser path. So, some uh, optimized movement here saves you a little time. Anyway, here's, here's Sakia again. Now she's dead. Uh, clear these out. Notice we just got a checkpoint. Uh, now check out this room. Yep, another checkpoint. Just a few seconds after that first one. Uh, we don't have to kill the enemies in this hallway, so we'll just run right past them. Go through this door into the next fight. Uh, this game kind of has a faction system. Uh, red team enemies are Scarlet Devil Mansion employees, and they attack blue enemies, which are like the incident forces. Uh, so you're going to see actually... Oh, shit. I'm going to lose a little time because this zombie ran right for the door. There are a ton of enemies there. Uh, and because, again, the zombies sit down... Oh, bosses. Saki is gonna get stuck on the other side of the door because she hates me. That's gonna s lose me so much time. Oh my gosh, Sakuya, cooperate already. That was a huge time loss, like seconds, dog. Anyway, just many people running past him. Yeah, 225. Uh, I lost a good five or ten seconds there. Dang. Okay, next boss fight, uh, Romelia. Uh, there's actually some phase trickery here. What we do is we toss out two bombs. Uh, first off, we have to toss two bombs exactly that's going to do enough damage to knock her into her second phase, where she stands still and will die to the next set of bombs. Uh, so if you actually do more damage than that, like if you throw two bombs and attack her, or throw three bombs, 
Uh, what happens is you knock her all the way past her second phase and into her third. And she starts at her third by lunging at you, and if that connects, uh, she life steals most of her health back. And that makes the fight real slow. So instead, if you throw two, wait it out, and then throw three, uh, you get the quick kill, it's over in 30 seconds, and life's good. Uh, wrong warp. So the reason why we went to Romelia's house isn't just because she and everyone else in the Scarlet Devil Mansion are real popular characters. Well, let's be honest, that was really why. Uh, but the thing is, we think Reimu's on the moon. I forget why she, we think she's on the moon, but we end up being right about that, so whatever, man. Uh, and we need to borrow Romelia's rocket. And uh, yeah, this rocket's 100% cannon. And that's pretty awesome. Caring about cannon is, in some ways, kind of for dweebs, but, you know, the fact that the rocket is cannon is pretty sweet, if you ask me. My frame rate is utterly tanking. I don't know if that'll show in the vid. I'm not entirely sure why that is, because I should be plugged in. Anyway, uh, this this fight, uh, you can't, again, fix timing, fix locations, can't speed it up, except for the very end. You'll see that when I get to it. So, again, I know where everything's gonna be. I just run to those locations. And annihilate everything that's there. Oh man, this frame rate issue is gonna stay. I hope not. Uh, if you've been looking in the bottom left corner, you may have noticed that this game has an ammo system. Uh, at least on this route, uh, there is no reason to care about it because. Uh, well, first off, Marissa is just a completely broken character, and she does so much damage that uh, by the time you kill anything, you'll have picked up enough power-ups that you can keep firing. Anyway, there's some zombies. We need to clear them out because the guards can't deal with them. So, uh, here's a question. Do you like penguins? Hope you don't. They're kind of bullying the guard there, but that's alright. Here's another wave of enemies. They run right for the rocket, uh, so I'll just blast them down. Now here's the question. Do you like umbrellas? Okay, this is the only phase you can really speed up. Whole bunch of mini-bosses. You gotta kill them. I took a lot of damage there. That's kind of scary. Uh, anyway, there's Alice. She's dead. Here's Tenshi. She's dead. Here's Sakia. She's dead. Uh, and there's some Will of Wisps that I had to clean out. I actually lost a guard here. That's kind of lame. Anyway, here's Nue. Uh, I don't have enough bombs to get the super quick kill on her, but whatever. I still got the kill. Kinda gotta wait around for a cutscene, and then walk into the rocket, and we're gonna blast off. So again, like, 2 minutes 30 seconds of that fight is just timing. Can't really speed it up. So the only thing you can speed up is killing those last sets of bosses quickly. Which, I kinda screwed up, but it's not a huge deal, I didn't lose a whole lot of time. So anyway, uh, we took a rocket. We're going to the moon. Oh, we're, we're going to the moon whenever this game loads. Not much to say about the next level. Uh, there are a lot of enemies. I'm going to run right past them. Uh, start a thing. I'll explain it later, actually. Uh, so, in Toho, the moon's covered in rabbits, and the reason why it's got rabbits is because Japanese mythology. Uh, we're in the west, we had the van on the moon, they had the rabbit in the moon. And the rabbits pound mochi or something? Look, I don't know how this works. Anyway, kill a couple enemies, and that drops the barrier. Now run right ahead. There are a bunch of enemies and some funny dialogue we're not going to see. 
Uh, I'll just run up here because that'll spawn the next wave that I care about. Uh, all these rabbits and flying saucers, I need to kill them to drop the barrier as usual. Uh, now that I do that, I walk out here. That starts a wave. So there's a barrier up ahead uh, that I didn't show you. Oh man, I'm actually kind of... Uh, give me two seconds. Yeah, I actually kind of took a scary amount of damage there. So there are a lot of... There's a huge wave of rabbits and flying saucers. And really if I go out there and there's a barrier right here. Which again, takes a while to fade in. Hard to see. Oh, that's not good. Okay, here we go. I'm actually, uh, again, kind of scared. Okay, but I did it. I killed those rabbits. I'm entering this boss fight with uh, no bombs, so it's going to be a little slow. But that's what I get for panicking. Anyway, here's Clown Piece. She's dressed like the American flag, because it's canon in Toho that the uh, 69 lunar mission was to uh, a lunar was um, invasion of the moon by an invasion of the moon by the earth and uh, that's pretty great because uh, it means Neil Armstrong was a space marine oh yeah and there, there's water on the moon shouts out to NASA next stage is uh, one of the more fun ones to to run just because it's relatively easy and a nice calm before the storm thing the barriers that exist in this, there's one barrier in this stage, and it's at the very end, and you get it uh, by killing a huge wave of enemies. But to get there, you gotta go past some other enemies, and we're just gonna run right past them, because that's fast. And actually, we're gonna get hung up on them, because I'm actually bad at video games. So there's the barrier, uh, we gotta get an iron stone, and how do you get it? You kill a lot of enemies. Uh, fortunately, we run up to the very end, we get a full pickup, that gives us full ammo, which isn't a huge deal, and full bombs, which is. Uh, this is one of the few areas where Maris's bomb doesn't suck, uh, I mean doesn't suck to kill a whole bunch of enemies, because this is a gauntlet that all the enemies will run right down. So. If you toss out a bunch of these, the enemies will run right into it while they try to kill you. Anyway, if you look in the top right corner, 45 enemies, killed them all. Had to wait to, for that pop-up to change to get the Iron Stone or the game soft locks. Like, it tells you to pick up the Iron Stone while you already have it, so you can't pick it up because you've already picked it up. And here we go. Uh, go ahead, and up ahead is Junko. She will be our next boss. Uh, even casually, uh, like playing this game, I got, when I first played this on hard, I got stopped by Romelia. And I beat Junko in like, maybe a half hour. She's not that difficult of a boss, even casually, and here in the speed run, you know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to bomb her into the ground, and it's going to be fast. You had to dodge a couple of her attacks, though. They actually do more damage than I'm comfortable with. Them. By that, I mean I actually will die. But she has a few bits where she stands still. Uh, kind of screw that up. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not getting the quick kill here. I screwed it up. Uh, so what's going to happen is this is going to be a survival phase. I just got to dodge for a couple seconds. And then she'll attack me and then I can finally end this. Die? Die, okay. Uh, that cost me like 15 seconds. It's not the biggest loss, but it is kind of a shame. And not much we can do here except wait. So the next stage is an absolute run killer. I've lost so many runs uh, to the stage alone, and yeah, like this stage, that should take 30 to 35 seconds, and as you can see it took 58 because I had to go through the survival phase. Yeah, so this last stage uh, has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, it's kind of a dungeon with a whole lot of linked together portals. 
Uh, there's a lot of enemies spawning, and they can kill me really easily, and it's really finicky to stand on the portals. I'll probably die here, and it'll kill my run, but I'll keep going. There's a certain rhythm to dodging enemies. Oh yeah, and it's really easy to get hung up on terrain in this level, even though, like, there's... Oh no! Okay, uh, shit, this isn't good. This is so slow. But... I'll just kill a couple enemies, uh, and then I'll try to take the rest fast. Shit, this is not good. Okay. Even just using a bomb there is... ...all kinds of bad. Uh, not having any health here is more kinds of bad. Yeah, run over. Uh, okay. Well, I'll just keep going because I've already done this much. So, the problem with this level is that uh, you have to stand in the portals for a couple seconds to warp out. Uh, and pretty much every enemy has an attack which does knockback or stun and makes it really easy to get knocked out of the area that the portal is in. The only routing I've been able to do on this basically focuses on sprinting past enemies before they spawn. Oh no, this is game over. Oh no. Uh, I thought I had this consistent too. This is not a good stage. Like, not even for speedrunning, just casually this is a bad way to finish a game. Like, if you have a game about dodging, or largely about dodging, you should have it be possible to actually dodge, and you can't in this environment. Everything is so claustrophobic, and you spawn right in the middle of a ton of crap. This was actually... If only I got this part, this exactly on the first time, because this was not bad. I went right past everything in the perfect rhythm. Okay, so up ahead is our next boss, Reimu. Uh, we found her, and she doesn't like us. Uh, guess what we're gonna do to kill her? If you guessed bombs, you're actually wrong. Uh, it's gonna be We can't kill her with bombs for a reason that'll be obvious later. Like, she's vulnerable to them, but we'll need, we'll need to save them for something else. Uh, fortunately, we're playing on easy, and Maris uh, still does a ton of damage with her laser, so we'll just use that. We're already getting a reasonable timing here. On hard, you can't tank any of her Ofuda, which are the uh, pieces of paper she's throwing out in most of her attacks. Uh, but we're playing on easy, so we can. Okay, last phase, she stands in one place, and I gotta dodge all kinds of shit. Oh no, this is not good. I'm losing time, because I'm getting bullied by all these stunning projectiles. Now I gotta wait out, and this'll be slow. And... dead. Anyway, I talk to her, and she explodes. Yeah, okay. So, you get your choice of boss and ending, uh, we'll be going with- we'll be fighting White Ramu. uh, it does give us the good ending, but the main reason why we will be doing it is because it is, uh, really easy to cheese with bombs. You'll see what I mean in a couple seconds, hopefully. First phase, a lot of directed projectiles, uh, not too hard to dodge. She seems to go to your location. Oh, and here we go! Quick kill! Woo! Okay, not much we can do. Uh, she's face planted on the ground. I look at it closer, but uh, that's not a very... That's kind of a dangerous angle. Uh, yeah. The sad part is, this will probably be my PB with that dreadful last stage. Uh, that's because I suck at video games. Uh, time isn't quite yet. It's almost here. Yeah, this wasn't very good of a run. Uh, shouts out to Andrew. Oh yeah, and the last stage is a party. I don't like parties. That's time. <laughs> 